Um, I'm delighted to be here this evening. I want to congratulate the European Inter Internet Foundation for the report. Um, it, it raises a lot of interesting questions. Um, I think the one thing that struck me about the report is that technology is going to wait for no man or woman, and technology is going to evolve at a pace that's pretty uh, amazing, as it has done in the past. And I, I think the big challenge for, for governments and policymakers is, is uh, to catch up with it and to harness it so that they can compete and we can collectively compete with the world out there, whether it be Asia or whether it be the U.S. So I think there's big, big challenges, uh, both in terms of um, trying to understand where it's going and also trying to understand, get ahead of it and use it as a key uh, enabler and a key weapon to help us uh, in the 21st century. The report mentions Gordon Moore, and I don't know how many of you have heard of Gordon Moore, but he's one of the founders of Intel Corporation 40 years ago, and he uh, developed a thing called Moore's Law. It's not, a, it's not a totally correct to say it's a law, but it's, it was basically a prediction by Gordon uh, back in 1965, and his prediction was that in, in uh, silicon terms, the numbers of transistors on a particular piece of silicon would double every, every 18 to 24 months. <coughs> And um, I don't think he expected that particular law to continue as long as it has. It's still in operation 40 years afterwards. Can you picture a scenario where there's an industry in the world that doubles the computing power every two years, halves the price, and uh, one transistor today uh, is less costly than a grain of rice? So that's the nature of that particular industry we're working with. The other um, law that... Uh, Gordon Moore, less well-known law is that the, the, the cost of putting up a facility doubles every two years also. So when I first got involved in semiconductor manufacturing, it was about 700 million to put up a facility. Today, it's over 3 billion. So it's quite a, quite a change, and the, and the 450 millimeter um, factories of the future will be 5, 6 billion per investment. Um, the research and development that's required for this industry and industries like it is absolutely staggering. Um, Intel, in terms of re research and development and the capacity it puts, puts in place, is somewhere around $8 billion per year every year. So it's a huge portion of its revenue stream, and it requires to capture a huge amount of incremental investment to be able to afford uh, to support that business model. Um, I think that's very, very important for the semiconductor industry in Europe and how it deals with that. Uh, you know, um, cadence. Um, I, I think the, the one of the building blocks for, for uh, the digital world in the future is going to be, continue to be uh, Moore's Law. And I think uh, we can see a way for at least the next 10, 15 years for Moore's Law to continue. Eventually, at some point in time, it, it hits the boundaries of, of physical limitations. Uh, but I'm sure by the time that comes up, uh, we'll figure out how to postpone the physical limitations. Um, the last point I'd like to make is um, there is a report coming out tomorrow, uh, I'm told, um, from Commissioner Verheugen. It's uh, the key enabler technology uh, communication. And I think that's extremely important uh, for Europe. Um, understanding what, of, what is of strategic importance to Europe as a whole and understanding how to enable uh, those uh, breakthrough technologies to protect them, to nurture them, and to enable them is a building block, uh, foundational aspect of uh, creating this digital um, uh, society in the future. The other thing uh, is, you know, in addition to the R&D, in addition to the, to the investment, in addition to the policies that, that make that up, I think fundamental to all of this is, underpins all of this, is our education system. I think in most uh, developed uh, countries around the world, the education system is, is uh, atrophying in terms, particularly in terms of science, maths, engineering, and technology, and that's a fundamental building block as part of the education system that's going to be required in the 21st century. I can't envision, envision any um, 21st century knowledge economy that's not underpinned by a, an education uh, system that's absolutely world class. And then the last point is, is government policies themselves. If you want to think about uh, strategic uh, enablers in terms of uh, industries, you have to think about government policy supporting those. And there has to be joined up thinking, 
coordinated policies to compete with the rest of the world. The rest of the world is um, strategically positioning itself and attracting what they consider to be strategic industries, strategic technologies, so that they become part of their arsenal to compete in the 21st century. And Europe as a whole needs to figure out what those equivalents are for Europe and make sure it understands what the competitive landscape looks like and responds to that in a proactive fashion. There are so many opportunities for us to get left behind here, and I think it's a combination of the evolving technology and government policies and a very clear um, long-term vision as to what it's going to look like and where we're going to be that's going to make us successful in the future. Thank you very much.